In this video, I'm going to talk about social media. So social media to me plays probably the biggest role in terms of building your personal brand and being consistent. This is the probably the place where you're going to spend the most time kind of interacting with others. And that's what really shows your personality and, and has people knowing and learning a little bit more about you. So there's so many different places out there that you could be online. Number one rule for me is don't feel like you have to be everywhere. I am on Twitter, LinkedIn and YouTube and that's it. I don't use Facebook much in my personal life anyway, so I, it's not something that I have chosen to use in terms of promoting my my blogs, putting my content out there. So Facebook is just not something that I use or sort of entertain just because it's not something that I personally like that much. I also feel that Facebook is very much a sort of um, a personal thing. Um, that is things that I share that are stuff that my friends and family know about rather than kind of it being anything to do with anything I do within the community. So I do very much kind of draw a line, but like I said, I don't really use it anyway. Um, Instagram is another thing that I choose to kind of keep personal or keep private um, because it's got nothing to do with the Dynamics community or the Power Platform community. So a lot of times with Instagram, you might find me, but I tend not to connect with people if I if I really only know you because of the community stuff that I do, if that makes sense. For, so for meeting at events and, and things like that. So think about what's important to you. And you might just want to be like, I am totally an open book and I will connect with anyone everywhere. And that is totally fine as well. It's about what, what makes sense to you and what's important to you. So I'm going to focus on the ones that I do use. And like I said, that's Twitter, LinkedIn and YouTube. So the first one, Twitter, is probably where I um, chat the most or share content the most. So I try and um, share not only my own content, but I like and retweet um, and comment on other people's content as well. And also try and have more of sort of a conversation. For me, I think Twitter is great to be able to actually have a bit of back and forth with people and maybe get to know them a little bit more, even if you haven't met in real life. Um, so with Twitter, all of my blog posts, I schedule a post that goes out to share um, a new article on Twitter and on LinkedIn, and that goes out immediately as soon as the blog post is, um, is scheduled or has gone live. And with that, that's something that's automated. Then, like I said, it's kind of a matter of then seeing what is on Twitter from people that I follow or people that have um, shared or re retweeted other things and then kind of sometimes getting lost down the rabbit hole. But that's a good thing sometimes and you meet new people and, and see new content. I would also use hashtags to where you can do a search based on a hashtag. So it might be hashtag Power Automate, hashtag um, Power Platform. Um, dynamics community or whatever it might be and I use that also to see uh, what people are sharing and what content is out there and, and who also I should maybe be following. Um, so Twitter definitely 100% I use that a lot. LinkedIn also I use that to share my um, new blog content and with that I do like it because I can share a lot longer of um, a sort of um, an, an update. So it's more sort of I can schedule in paragraphs and I can really write something thoughtful, hopefully, um, and, and put some real effort into that content as opposed to very short with Twitter. Um, so not as much that I can sort of put out there. So LinkedIn, uh, it was pointed out to me by somebody that maybe I shared too much of just my own stuff and maybe not of others. I find LinkedIn to be getting more and more just noise and harder to kind of break through what is real content that is of value and of interest to people as opposed to just noise. And there is a lot of it out there and there are a lot of people doing different styles of posts to where you get into it and it's really sales pitchy. So so I tend not to be on LinkedIn as much in terms of actually going through and seeing what other people's posts are about. And like I said, I do that more on Twitter. So 
LinkedIn, it's great to be able to get stuff out there, but again, it's a little bit harder to find real interesting content on there that I want to share. The last one that I use, YouTube, we're going to do a whole video about YouTube videos, a video about YouTube videos um, on YouTube. So that'll be something else where I'll talk through, through that in more detail. But YouTube, 100%, I have tried and made a conscious effort this year to use video content a lot more, to create more video content. Also push myself outside of that comfort zone to where I was doing just um, uh, sort of demo or, or product videos, if you will. So a lot of the stuff about Dynamics 365, a lot of that Forms Pro stuff, I was doing a video to go along with each blog post, which I'm still doing, but I tended not to do this sort of face-to-face -face thing. It makes me uncomfortable. So I'm, I am trying to push myself um, to do something a little bit different. So like I said, we'll talk about YouTube in another video as well. So one thing I would say with your social media um, profiles, no matter where you decide you are going to sort of put yourself on and what you're going to set up, make sure that you've got consistency throughout those different social media profiles. And by that, I mean um, with your either your images, so your, your sort of circular profile image, and then also that header or that banner image that you have that real estate at the top of your profile as well. So keep those consistent and use the same um, sort of profile images or something that you can tell ties in together between those different profiles. That way somebody goes to my Twitter profile and they can see an image and then they go to LinkedIn and they can tell it's the same person. They don't have to sort of be looking and saying, oh, I'm not sure if it's them because I can't tell by their image. Also make sure that your any photographs of yourself are very clear and it's obvious that it's you. Um, I do see a lot of people doing cartoons or doing things where you just can't tell what they actually look like. And unfortunately, I'm not a big fan of people that have photographs that are like 20 years old. Um, and then you meet them in real life and I could walk past you because I've got no clue that it's you because you don't look like that anymore. And there's nothing wrong with that. We all get older and we that's fine. We just have to embrace it. So make sure that you've got something that is up to date. 100% make sure it's up to date. Five years old, that's fine. But if we're talking 15, 20 years and you don't have the same hairstyle or even the same hair because um, it's gone, then just make sure you keep something that's a little bit more up to date. So definitely keep that consistent. Also, when you are sharing your content, um, let's say on Twitter, for example, because like I said, you can have a, a faster um, uh, conversation with Twitter. We've talked about being authentic. We've talked about being yourself. And that, to me, I stand by that. But you have to keep in mind that if the authentic 100% you is that you are um, extremely religious or extremely anti-religion or extremely pro one political party or extremely anti another pol political party and you are going to tweet those things, be prepared to either lose followers or not gain followers because that will turn people off. So it's kind of a bit of a be authentic, but not really. I'm just saying that you have to kind of be prepared that, okay, you're, if you are very, very sort of um, uh, really like pro something one way or the other, you just will, you will alienate people. You will turn people off. And that's just who we are as, um, as human beings. And that's just sort of that goes along with it when anyone has sort of polar opposite views on things. So keep that in mind. Um, doesn't mean you have to not be yourself, but maybe sort of dial back on some of those opinions if they're not related to what you're trying to put out there, either whether it's from a dynamics perspective, a power platform perspective, or something completely different and, and in a whole different um, industry. Just keep that in mind. What is it that you're trying to put out there? What is it that you're trying to attract? Um, and just keep in mind, you don't want to be too polarizing with, with your opinions. Or maybe you do. Maybe that's part of it. And, and then the last thing, once you've got your social media profile set up, again, I mentioned this in the video about starting a website. Make sure you have those links to your social media profile 
on your website so that people can find you. You could also do a um, Twitter feed if you wanted to. That's really easy to set up. You can kind of go into the settings in Twitter and you can actually create a little widget and it will give you the code and you can embed that into your site. So it's very straightforward to do um, so that you can have that and people can actually see what you're tweeting about from within your website itself. So don't forget that to go ahead and go back to your site and add those social media profiles. All right, so let's hear from some of the other MVPs. I want to know what their thoughts are about social media and having profiles set up and whether they do or not. The people that I most followed, most of them had these really cool handles and I wanted one too. Honestly, I've, I've actually really, I'm not a nicknamer. I'm not very good at coming up with nicknames or, or, um, or any of that sort of stuff. So I actually couldn't come up with anything. So that was my first problem. The second thing um, that, that sort of swayed me against that was that I realized that sometimes I had trouble remembering who was who, even though I love their content to sort of remember the person's name, especially once I'd met someone and engaged with them, I tend to, you know, I'm good at remembering names and wasn't so good at remembering whose clever handle was, was whose. Twitter is like a water cooler conversation with people in the community so people will share their content there um, I've, I've really built my network from LinkedIn but Twitter is a great place to to maybe see what people are doing a little bit beyond their um, beyond their work it also means it's a spot where people will share something fun something funny little snippets of things so yeah it's a bit more like the water cooler chat there's I think it's important to have a, a good personal brand so if I had a very common name then I might make up a fictitious handle um, and that's that's fine or you can use your, your real name and um, both work uh, equally well um, just so long as it's it's well promoted. Spend you know probably an hour a day on, on LinkedIn I'm um, sending lots of messages receiving and replying to lots of messages um, posting uh, updates on there. I'm on Twitter a little bit maybe 10 minutes a day. Powered by Edgy is you know my handle, and it's a combination of my name and a play on the Power platform. Uh, I wanted something easy for people to remember and type in, and I also wanted it to be personal. Depending on um, which interest is being highlighted, I'll use Twitter for technology-related uh, interests like the Microsoft and the making aspects, uh, and then Instagram for sort of lifestyle and aviation. I spend more time on Twitter as the, that's the platform you know used to, to build the empire, right? I mainly use LinkedIn and Twitter, but then I also use YouTube. Now, I create content for YouTube and then distribute them via Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, I have something like 1,500 uh, connections on Twitter now, which is crazy because I had zero April last year. Um, and when I actually produce my videos and my content um, and they get shared and they get liked, it obviously um, creates my exposure to other people that may have not seen my brand before, but not just my brand, it actually helps people. And that's what I actually initially set out to do. I personally don't feel comfortable having a persona. Um, it feels fake to me and for me, my brand is about who I am as a person. I have nothing to hide. This is me. Go ahead and Google my name. You will find everything about me. So I've got to make sure I behave myself. My main one would be LinkedIn. Um, I find it's got more of a professional um, feel, um, but it's much less time demanding. Um, in comparison to Twitter, I sometimes go on there, but I find it really overwhelming. My online handles and names, they are basically mostly based on uh, my own name. So my website is jonasr.app, which I think is a really cool domain. Uh, and then, uh, well, since I was a kid, I've been called Rappen, which basically translates to the rap. And I'm using Rappen on Twitter, on GitHub and LinkedIn and so on. So it might not be the best. It uh, works mostly if you're Swedish, uh, but I use it on as many platforms as I can. I think Facebook is too noisy and uh, when I want to reach out it doesn't really attract the audience I want and when I want to read something it's just too noisy for me. So Twitter and LinkedIn are the primary social media channels I'm using. For my online profiles I just use my full name Kylie Kaiser. I made this decision on purpose because I wanted to make sure that however you look for me on 
Twitter is how you'll find me on LinkedIn, is how you'll find me on all other social media platforms. And I didn't want to try and keep up with multiple profiles or things like that, but instead I chose um, certain networks to be professional focused and then different networks would be personal focused. So I don't keep up with like a personal Twitter and a professional Twitter, but all Twitter kind of reflects my brand and reflects um, the same content that you would see on any kind of professional network that I'm working on. Now you will notice that in a lot of profiles, I do use the number two. And that is not because someone else already had Gus Gonzalez, although I think that was the case on Twitter. But there are other platforms where that wasn't the case and I'm still Gus Gonzalez too. The reason why I'm number two is because it's my favorite number. And it's actually the number that I always played with in every sport that I play, whether it was water polo or whether it was rugby, whatever it is, I was always number two. I mainly focus in two social media platforms, which are Twitter and LinkedIn. Uh, so those are the two platforms that I use. I do post on Facebook, but I've you know, decided years ago that I wanted to keep Facebook as a personal social media account. So Joel Lindstrom, it's my name. I was born with it. It works. There's no, not other Joel Lindstrom. Although there is a guy on YouTube that has more followers than I am. He's an Aikido karate instructor. So it's my goal to uh, catch up with Aikido Joel someday. I'm, I'm, I'm coming after you, Aikido Joel. I haven't created any sort of persona or anything like that. It, it was something that I considered doing at one point. I had a bunch of domains registered for to be the, you know, the portals guy. Um, in the end, I decided to um, brand everything under the company. So I uh, let go of those domains. Um, so everything is really tied back to the company. Um, the one place where that can get a little tricky is on Twitter. I do have a personal Twitter account that I almost never tweet from. I think I have like three or four tweets. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes people will find that when they want to tag me on something in Twitter and they'll, you know, they'll tag me using the, my personal Twitter account, um, which, um, again, I, I just, I'm not very, very active at all on that side of things. Um, but I do have, uh, both again, both the corporate and the, and the personal Twitter for that. Um, but the personal is really just all kind of personal stuff has nothing to do with community power platform, Microsoft, anything like that. So. Uh, well, social media platforms, I mainly use Twitter and LinkedIn, um, YouTube as well, obviously, but not so much as a social platform, more, of, more as a way of actually publishing videos. Which do I prefer? I think I prefer Twitter, to be honest, because I love the, the kind of that, that sort of um, very dynamic back and forth you get between people, sort of very quick interchange. Uh, it, it, it seems very very like a, a, a kind of a living social platform uh, as probably as close to actual in person because you kind of get that quick interchange whereas linkedin sometimes you feel as though the life has been squished out of a lot of posts because so uh, a lot of people um i i do have my own name people know me for my name but you also see my twitter handle and my blog is ready xrm if I were to do it all over again, I'd probably just stick with my own name um, just because, you know, XRM is kind of an older term and I think it just really flex as a personal brand. It's all about, it's really about me, who I am. And so that's the approach I would take. So if anybody's looking for advice on that, that's the thing I would do as opposed to kind of come up with some clever name like, um, you know, the, you know, the, the ninja or the guru or anything like that. I don't want to be self pretentious. Um, or anything clever like that. You know, I've thought of a few other names, but I'm sort of like, that's sort of what I started with and that's probably what I'll just keep using from now on. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.